Alright, so next up we're going to continue with our discussion about jumping and calling with the AVR set of microcontrollers. The slides for this section come from the AVR microcontroller and embedded systems uh, book using assembly and C. Alright, so we're going to be talking about jumping today and in particular we're going to be talking about conditional jumps or branches as they're commonly referred to. Now, there are many different types of branches in the AVR or at mega series of microcontroller uh, assembly instructions. And this is very common. You'll find this in all sorts of architectures because there are different ways of branching based on conditions that are important in day-to-day -day programming, in day-to-day -day computer operation. So you'll th see things like branch if equal, branch if not equal, uh, branch if minus, branch if plus. And then you see at the bottom there, there are these branch if something flag is set or something flag is cleared. And these flags are found in what's referred to as the S reg or status register. And you can see at the top of the slide deck right there, the I, T, H, S, V, N, Z, and C are all individual bits within the 8-bit status register that Z, for instance, refers to as zero or uh, C refers to as carry. And these are important to know about. All right, we use conditional jumps for both conditions like if statements, but also in terms of loops. So these are two very uh, important fundamental programming structures within uh, computer operation. Now, again, I will reiterate, it's really important to be able to refer to and have this on hand, the instruction set manual or alternatives to it. Okay, so as we go through these examples, it's really a good idea to pull out the instruction set manual, open up to the page on, say, the JMP, the jump, or the br branch if uh, not equal, uh, BRNE, and open it up and take a look at what are the important flags that are associated with it. There are conditions that occur as the result of math operations. So, for instance, in a very simple operation here, A minus B. If the result is zero, then we know that, that A was equal to B. So the status register has a Z or zero bit, and that will be set or cleared, so made to be one or made to be zero, based on the outcome of the subtraction. As well, uh, if there is an inequality, so for instance, A is less than B, and we, we can see what the end result will be after the subtraction, then a carry bit, the, the C bit in the status register will be set. That is, it will be made to be one. Otherwise, it would remain zero, for instance. All right, so let's write a program uh, so that if R20, register 20 is equal, or the contents of, of register 20 is equal to the contents of register R21, then we make the value that's in register R22 increase. And we're going to use the branch if not equal or BRNE uh, operation in, uh, in assembler. So here's, here's how we would write it. And you can see the flow chart on the right hand side. Uh, and so there's that diamond, which is the, uh, the if statement basically. And if the, the outcome of it is no, then we branch to the right. If it's yes, we branch downwards in that flow chart. And so if the answer is yes to that question, is R20 equal to R21, then we increment the contents of R22. If it's not, if it's the opposite, if it's, it's uh, not equal, then we bypass the incrementing of R22. So in assembler, what we would do is we're assuming that R20 and R21 have been filled before. We do a subtraction. So we do subtract R20 comma R21. Then we call the operation BRNE, so branch if not equal. And what we're saying here is that uh, we're going to be taking a look at the Z bit in the status register. That's what BRNE tests. And so if it turns out that, and we can see it in the comments here, so Z will be set if R20, the contents of R20 is equal to R21. So it will be one. If it's zero, then it means that R20 and R21 don't have equal values contained within them. So if not, we will, uh, if not equal, okay, so if they're not equal to each other, we will jump to the next label and not do the incrementing. If they are equal, however, 
then the branch doesn't jump to the next label. It goes, the program counter moves to the next line, which is increment R22. Okay, once that's done, then it moves to whatever is instructed on the next label after that. All right, next, write a program that if R26 or the contents of R26 is less than the contents of R24, then we will increase the value of what's in R22. To do this, we will use the branch if carry clear. That is basically saying branch if the bit C in the status register is equal to zero. It's clear. Here's the solution. We do uh, subtract R26, R24. So we're, we're basically comparing the contents of R26 and R24. And the comment here says the C bit, so the carry bit in the status register will be set. That is, it'll be made to be one. when R the contents of R26 is less than the contents of R24. So if the carry is clear, then we will jump to the label L1. So we will bypass the incrementing of R22. If, it, if the carry bit is 1, then we don't jump immediately to L1. What we do is we increment R22, and then we move on to whatever is pointed to or, or labeled by L1. All right, next up, third example. Write a program that basically if the contents of R26 is greater than or equal to the contents of R24, then we increase the value in register R22. And here we're going to use the branch if carry set, which is different than before. We're using carry clear. Now we're going to use carry set. That means the carry bit is, we're looking to see if it's equal to one. So we do a subtraction. Uh, we do sub R26 comma R24 and the carry bit will be cleared if R26 is greater than or equal to R24. It will be, uh, otherwise it's set and then we will jump to L1. So if it's cleared, then we will basically go and do the increment. If it is set, so if the value is 1 as the result of that subtraction, then we bypass the incrementing of R22 and we go to whatever is instructed on the on the line labeled L1. Now let's let's make this a little bit more complicated, more interesting, okay? We're going to add in another uh, we're going to have one increment, one decrement, and then we're going to do a final increment afterwards. So here is sort of a pseudo code uh, where we're doing well it's sort of like C we're we're going to do uh, main function right here. Initially what we do is we set the contents of R17 to be 5. Then we do an if else uh, statement. And in the if, we test to see if register R20's contents is greater than the contents in R21. If that's the case, then we're going to increment the contents of R22. If it isn't greater than, so it is less than or equal, then we will decrement the contents of R22. After that's done, no matter which branch we take, whether it's the uh, the if or the else components, then we're going to increment R17. Okay, and so you can see the flowchart on the left. The assembler example or, or instance of this would look like this. We use LDI, so load immediate, the value five into register R17. Then we subtract and we, we do a sub R21 comma R 20. What happens after that is that the status register will change. And we're going to examine the uh, clear bit, the C bit, using BRCC, the branch if carry clear. We will jump to the else label. You can see the else label right down there. If the C bit is zero, if it's one, then we do the increment of R22. Okay, then we jump to the label next. So no matter what happened, well, basically, if, if we had to do the increment, then we jump to next. Then we do, so we bypass the decrement of R22. That's why that jump is there. No matter which branch we ended up taking, we will end up at the next label, which means we then do an increment of the contents of register R17. Okay, so next up, 
let's write a program that executes an instruction. Add R30, R31. So we're going to take R31 and add it to R30, or the contents of each, and then store that value in R30. So we're going to accumulate a value in R30. We're going to do that nine times. Okay, the solution to this is we load immediate the value 9 into R16. That is our counter for the loop. Then we have two labels, L1 and L2. The L1 label is, is important because we're going to keep looping there basically nine times. We add at that point, we add uh, R31 to whatever's in R30 and store the value in R30. Once we're done with that, then we decrement the contents of R16. So basically it was at nine, it's now going to be eight. The next time we come through this loop, it'll be seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, so we do this a bunch of times until it gets to zero. And at the end of this loop, we see the BRNE branch if not equal. If it gets to zero, then we go to the next line, L2. Okay, that's the label. And then it's R jump, it's a relative jump, and it, it just sort of cycles around over and over again. We lock into that position. So basically, we're saying up until the point that uh, R16 is zero, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. As long as it's not zero, we keep looping back to L1 over and over and over and over again. As soon as the decrement results in a value of zero in register R16, then the BRNE allows you to move out of the loop and to label L2. It doesn't know that L2 is there. It just goes to the next instruction that would be allowed for by the program counter. All right, let's take a look at another example. Write a program that calculates the result of 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus etc. So always in increments or decrements of 1. Okay. So we load the value 9 into register R16. We load the value R0, uh, zero, sorry, into register R17. So this is a running sum that's going to be in R17. We then have a labeled line where it's, uh, and this is basically the, the start of our loop. Okay, so we've initialized our, va our variables. We're now going into the loop. That's what the L1 label is telling us. That's the beginning of the loop. We add R16 to whatever's in R17. So initially, it's going to be 0 plus 9, and that gets placed in R17. Then we decrement the value at R16. So R16 was 9. Now it's going to be 8. Is it 0? No, it's not 0. So our branch, if not equal, means we go back up to L1. Then we take that 8 and we add it to 9. So whatever was in R16, which is 8, whatever was in R17, which is uh, 9, we add those together, so it gives us 17. And then we take the contents of R16, which was 8, and we make it 7 now, and we continue along, looping over and over again, until such time as the contents of R16 gets down to 0, at which point the branch if not equals allows us to break out of the loop and move on to the line that's labeled L2, which is a relative jump, which makes us loop around over and over again at that one single line. So we're looping forever and halting there, basically. Not halting, but looping there forever. All right, let's do it again. This time we're starting at a value of 20, but basically it's the same operation over and over again. So you can see we've loaded immediately into R16, the value 20, R17, which is the running sum, starts at zero. And effectively we're doing the same thing as before, it's just that instead of starting at 9, we started at 20. Same thing. Okay, so these loops basically in C, and we've been talking about C a lot, but we can implement this in assembler too. There's an initialization condition or, or initialization of a variable. There's a condition that needs to be tested and a calculation that results after the loop has happened. Uh, I'm incrementing or decrementing, something like that. And then in, so that's a test condition, and that's uh, controlled effectively by these conditional jumps. And then we have the work that happens inside of the loop. And that can be anything. Okay, there's all sorts of things that could go inside. But the branches, the BRNE, the, BR, uh, the, the BRCCs, the, those sort of things are going to be in the test condition at the top of that for loop right there. So we initialize, we do something, we calculate, and then we loop. There's our branch, okay, that conditional jump. All right. Let's do this again. Let's take a look at another loop right now. So write a program that calculates 1 plus 3 plus 5 all the way up to 27. And the important point here is that we're not incrementing by 1 or decrementing by 1. We're incrementing by 2. 
Okay, so we can't just use the ink or deck uh, commands in assembler. So we initialize, we do load immediate, zero into R20, one into R16. You can see the L1 label for the start of our loop. We're going to add R16 and R20 together, store the value in R20. Then we're going to take that increment, okay? That increment is an increment of two, and we put it into R17. Now we could have potentially put R17 uh, somewhere else, but right now the way this is structured, it makes sense to put it in R17. We then add the contents of R17 to R16. Okay, so we're going to add 2 to it. Then we load immediate the value 27 into R17, uh, into R20. Sorry, we're going to load R17's uh, value to be 27. And what we're going to do there is we're going to do comparison between the contents of R17 and R16. And this basically is set up so that if we see that they're equal to each other, that means there's a re result of 0. Then, uh, or if one becomes, oh, sorry, in this case, it's going to be less than or equal to. So actually, we're going, we can go below zero. Um, so what we're doing is we're doing a branch of carry uh, clear, okay, on this, okay, because it could be less than zero, yeah. So a branch of not equal would not be what we want here. Uh, and so we branch of carry clear on L to L1, so that if R6, the contents of R16 is less than or equal to R27, then we jump back. Okay, so that's the subtlety between uh, the branch of not equal and say the branch of carry clear. All right, so that was a quick uh, introduction to, to branching, conditional branching or, or conditional jumps, what we refer to as branching. It's important that when you do this, that you're referring to the instruction set manual or summaries of the instruction set manual because there are subtleties in how these work and the sort of registers that are used to do the testing that we need to do. For different architectures, it is done slightly differently, but generally speaking, they all resemble each other in the way that we're seeing here. Mm -hmm.